Before you can use KNAPS at runtime, you first have to pre-generate some data that represents the navigable areas and topology of the terrain, called path data. You can generate this data by integrating the KNAPS API directly into your own level editor, or by using an interactive visual tool called the KNAPS Lab, which we'll show in this demo. Path data is generated automatically from the triangles in your terrain meshes. When using the KNAPS Lab, you provide these triangles in one or more OBJ files. In this case, we are using a small sample village. Once the triangles are loaded, you can adjust the coordinate axes if necessary, and specify a basic set of information about the dimensions and movement capabilities of the character that will use the path data at runtime. The generation process itself is very fast, shown here in real time. KNAPS generates two different data structures, a nav mesh and a graph. The nav mesh represents the walkable areas of the terrain, shown here as a mesh of blue triangles with black borders. It's used primarily for collision tests during path following. The graph, shown here as lighter blue lines overlying the nav mesh, is used for path computations. By default, path data is generated everywhere in the terrain that the character could possibly stand. However, you can eliminate unnecessary areas such as the rooftops by providing seed points that designate the areas you want to keep or anti-seeds that designate areas you want to exclude. Here we place a seed point in the middle of the street. When we regenerate the path data, the nav mesh and graph are only generated in the areas accessible from that seed point, so they are no longer generated on the rooftops. The KNAPS path data generation system scales to handle even very large worlds. For instance, this city map is 1 km squared and is treated here in only 14 seconds, or less on a machine with more processors. The accuracy and quality of the path data itself is not affected by the size of the map or by the number of input triangles. KNAPS path data can natively distinguish between different types of terrains. In this example, the input triangles that make up the streets, sidewalks, and crosswalks have all been tagged with different types of materials in the OBJ file. The path data preserves these terrain types, shown by the different colors in the nav mesh and the graph. At runtime, you can retrieve this information from the path data whenever you need it. Here, the lab is showing the terrain type associated with each triangle pointed at by the cursor. As an alternative to tagging individual triangles with terrain types, you can create a spatial volume and automatically tag all triangles within that volume. Here, each time we click in the terrain mesh, we create a new point in the outline around our volume. Once we create all the points, specify a terrain type for the volume, and regenerate the data, the colors of the final path data indicate that the terrain type within the volume we created is different from the surrounding region. The KNAPS Lab also provides the ability to carry out several different kinds of collision tests and basic path calculations using the path data you generate. Here we're conducting a test called a hedgehog, which is a set of collision tests that radiate outward from the cursor position until the nav mesh border is reached or a maximum distance is exceeded. Note that both terrain types in the nav mesh are considered walkable at first. We can change that, forbidding the collision tests from crossing the green area of the terrain. Similarly, you can forbid different types of characters from crossing different types of terrain at runtime. Finally, you can see here the orthogonal view and overhead view of the cursor position. Note the way the ring of collision tests follows the boundaries of the nav mesh as the cursor moves around the terrain. You can use the KNAPS API at runtime to conduct similar high-performance collision tests against your own path data. Let's return to the small village we looked at earlier. Here, the sidewalks, roads, and crosswalks have all been tagged with different terrain types. At first, the collision tests in the hedgehog are permitted to cross all three types of terrain and are only stopped by the outside borders of the nav mesh. But by changing the options in the test dialog, we can change which terrain types are allowed and forbidden. First, we'll forbid the sidewalk terrain type. Note the way the ring of collision tests now crosses only the road and the crosswalks, but not the sidewalk. You could set up cars and vehicles in the game with this configuration to avoid them driving over the curb. Next, we'll re-enable the sidewalk and forbid the road. The collision tests are now allowed to cross only on the sidewalk and the crosswalks, but not in the roadway. You could set up pedestrians in the game with this configuration to avoid them running out into the street. Another type of test that you can conduct against the nav mesh at runtime and within the KNAPS lab is a disk expansion. This test calculates the radius of the largest circle that can fit within the borders of the nav mesh when centered on a given position, in this case the position of the cursor. It also indicates the closest point of contact with the nav mesh border, shown by the red line. Like the collision tests in the hedgehog, you can set the terrain types that the disk should consider navigable. 
Here we set the green terrain type as forbidden. This type of test can be useful at runtime to find the nearest nav mesh border or to determine the amount of open space that exists around a character or position. The Kinapse Lab can also show you the results of path calculations between points in your terrain. Here, for better visibility, I'll hide the graph and the outlines of the nav mesh triangles before selecting the Pathfinder test. This test finds and draws the shortest path between a start point and an end point that you specify. You can place these points anywhere in your level to see the effect of planning paths through different areas. Note that, for the moment, we're looking at the initial path through the edges of the graph, not the final smooth path that a bot would actually follow at runtime. We'll get to that soon. Path calculations can also take into account terrain types. For example, this path was calculated using all terrain types. However, if we forbid the road terrain, the path is constrained to follow the sidewalks and crosswalks. Even when we move the endpoint to different locations on the sidewalk, the constraint of staying off the road is respected. However, if I move the endpoint to the middle of the road, a path can no longer be found since the road terrain can't be crossed. Re-enabling the road terrain type allows the path to be found successfully. Let's return to this test level to see some more convoluted path calculations. First, as in the village, we can forbid the path from crossing the green terrain by adjusting the allowed terrain types. By placing the start and end points at different spots, we can find paths that thread their way through these complex maze-like sets of obstacles. Now let's look at some simple path smoothing. Instead of viewing the initial path calculated through the graph, we can easily configure the Pathfinder test to show a smoothed version of the same path. This smoothed version is simplified by removing as many nodes as possible, skipping directly ahead to points farther along the path. Although the Kinapse Lab uses a simplified smoothing algorithm that is not quite the same as the fully configurable system used at runtime, it does at least provide a more realistic look at the trajectory that a bot might actually follow to get from place to place in the game. The Kinapse path calculation algorithm is very fast, even on larger terrains such as this city. As we move the cursor around, the path to its position is updated in real time. Note that the stutters here are just caused by the cursor picking impossible locations on rooftops or the sides of buildings, not by waiting for the path to be calculated. 